praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We're glad you can join us once again. And we go right into our study on prayer. Prayer is very vital and it's absolutely necessary for a believer in Christ. One cannot do without prayer if you want to hear from God and if you want to have a relationship with God. So last week we look at the first description of prayer, which is sincere. One having a sincere heart or out of the soul to God, to God, must have the sincere heart. As David says in Psalms 66, he says, I cry out to him with my mouth and the high praise was on my tongue. So here is David crying out to the Lord. We all need to cry out to him. Some believe that they don't need to, but we, those who are born again, those who know their God, we need to cry out to him. And it should be a part of our exercise every day, crying out to God with a sincere heart. Remember, God looks at the inward part of man. Even though man look at the outward, God looks at the inward part of man. So here we go again, he says, in Psalms, I'm um, sorry, Hosea. Hosea said, they do not cry out to me from the heart. So we also learn that there are some pretenders within the body. There are some who will dress like you. There are some who will cry just like you. But God knows their heart. And they are sincere. Trust me. So sincere. But within them, there is a they only for their greed, only for what they want. Some follow Jesus because of the food and the fishes, but some follow Jesus to have a relationship. We also look at Proverbs 15.8. It says, the prayer of the upright is his delight. Okay, Proverbs 15.8. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is acceptable to him. He talks about upright, talking about holding or keeping the principle, keeping the word of God. That's why the scripture says, bind the word around your neck. That is a reminder of God, a reminder of what God has done for us. So let's go into the second part. And we want to talk about a prayer must be sensible, the heart of soul, right? Not just babbling, babbling, or rattling songs, making a lot of unnecessary songs. But the prayer, right, must be sensible. One, it says, a sense of wanting of mercy by reason of the danger of sin, okay? We all feel, or there's a feeling in us, a groaning in us, you know, that there is danger, there is sin in us. We, we want God to, to hear our prayer, all right? And it's very important if many, um, we would notice many men and women in the Bible where you hear groaning, you know, before God, in the flesh, in the growing of, in, in within. First Samuel, let's go to First Samuel 10. First Samuel 1 10. She was desperately, or she was deeply desperate, and the prayer to the Lord with weeping bitterly. Desperate. We know that Hannah, desperate. There are times in our life, okay, there is a deep, desperate prayer in our life. How many times that you find yourself in a place in so desperate that you want the Lord to really hear, you want God to hear your voice. Here is Hannah. 
and she was desperately bit. Why? Because she wanted a child. Right? Her husband, um, uh, Elkanah, her husband. Let's read from verse 7. So she went on, she went on year by year, as often as she went up to her house of the Lord. She used to provoke her. Then Hannah wept and would not eat. She wept and she would not eat because she had been provoked. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more than you than ten sons? Right? In her heart, she wanted this child. Right? And she was provoked by Penhan. Okay? The next wife. And by seeing Penhan giving child to her husband, it caused a deep, deep, deep wept, a deep distress. And on top of that, you have been provoked. Right? You know, I always tell people when you begin to provoke a child of God and they come to a place of weeping desperately inside God will show up speedily so verse so verse 8 says and Elkanah her husband which we read and verse 9 after they had eaten and drunk in Shalom Hannah rose and Eli her now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat beside the doorstep of the temple of the Lord. So if you notice, she went into the temple. Some of us, we say, well, we no longer go to church. But it's important, God instituted the church. Right? Verse 10. She was desperately, she was deeply desperate distress and to pray to the Lord and wept bitterly and she vowed a vow and said O Lord of hosts if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and do not forget your servant but will give to your servant a son then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall touch his so we know that she, because of the desperate, because she was in distress, she prayed unto the Lord and she made a vow. Keep in mind, it is very important when one make a vow, do your best to keep your vow. As she continued praying before the Lord, observe her month and hand and speak in her heart, only her lips move. And her voice, so you see, even in the times of, of desperation, even in the times of distress, we are to pray unto the Lord. Let's find another scripture Matthew. Let's go to Matthew, Matthew 26. And the Peter remembered and said of Jesus, Before the rooster crow, you will deny me three times. And he went out with bitterly, wept bitterly. Peter, remember, and say of Jesus. So remember, Peter thought that he knew everything. But when he remember what Jesus, he realized. Okay? He had sinned. Okay? The second point, let's go to the second point. The second point is sense of mercy and receive, right? Sense of mercy. We're talking about, remember, we're talking about sensible, encouraging, comforting, right? Strengthening, enlightening, mercy. And this, you know, we need that in our life, okay? To encourage, comforting. And David, David says, bless the Lord. O my soul and all that is within me. See, David understand that 
he himself need to be encouraged. Huh? He himself need to be comforted. He himself need to be strengthened. That's why prayer is so important. Prayer is not for God, but prayer is for us. We got to realize that in our soul. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. So he command everything in me, but bless the Lord. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We are people always forgetting what God has done for us. Even last week, God will show up. <coughs> and something may happen. And we forget. Because people always forget. Who forgives all our iniquity? Who heals our diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfy you with good so that your youth may reward like an eagle. <clears throat> right? God. So when we come to God, as I said, sensible. Sensible. Hallelujah. So let's go to verse, the point three. Point you talk about. Again. Prayer. In our soul, again, said the, 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 the O Lord of hosts, said David, He has revealed to thy servant. We should get it in Psalms, Second Samuel 7 27. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore, your servant has found the courage to pray this prayer to you okay so we are so God is a God that he reveals sometimes we don't know what to pray for many times the Spirit of God he reveals the will of the Father towards us okay reveal the will of the Father towards us so a good sense of sin and the Word of God sometimes we need the encouragement we need to be encouragement from the Lord okay very important so we will stop here today and we will continue we we'll continue the third point in our description of prayer which is affectionate okay affectionate Daniel Daniel 4, no, sorry, Daniel 9, 3 and 4 says, I pray to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandment. Right? So even though we go through trials, misery, pain, God in prayer, when we pray to God, right, He's the covenant keeping God and also the steadfast love of God to those who keep His commandment. So we are to keep the commandment of God. Father, we give you praise, we give you thanks, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father, Lord, that God, that we will continue to seek your face day and night. Help us to keep your word. Help us, Lord God, to walk in truth. Help us, oh Lord God, to keep us in, in path of righteousness. Lord, as we continue, Lord, in this series of prayer, let prayer, oh God, be, oh God, our lifeline. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you praise. We give you thanks. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen, amen. Be blessed, be encouraged walk in the blessedness of God which he have caused us to walk in guard your hearts and mind as we see the evil days approach as we wait for the coming hope of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Amen and Amen be blessed